In this one, elite bowling coach Ian Pont talks through tent peg two in his framework for fast bowling, front foot impact. Let's get it. So from here, we're gonna to go to tent peg two. Tent peg two is front foot impact. I'm gonna do this from front on, then I'm gonna reverse it round, and I'm gonna explain why in a second. So if I'm front on, what I'm gonna do on the bottom of my action, I'm gonna take my hands away, is I'm going to extend my foot and land with a straight front leg. And when I do that, I'm gonna create a little bend in the back here, it's called a drop step. So what I've got is I've got a drop step and a block at the front. So it's a front foot block and drop, I'm giving you the right terminology. Drop step, up on my toe drop, front foot block. Now, why I want to keep this leg straight and not bend, is if I bend my front leg, I'm gonna absorb my energy. I don't wanna do that. I wanna transfer my energy into the top of my body. And I do it by creating a blocking motion. A bit like hitting a brick wall and my top's gonna to get thrown forward. So I'm trying to create a base that's strong, stable. Drop, block. Again, drop, block. Whilst that's happening, the top of my body, I'm gonna isolate that, now goes to grab the batsman's collar here and grab the sight screen from behind here. So put those two together. This is the position for tent pig two. And what you'll notice is my feet are lined up as if I was on skis. Lots of coaches make the mistake of having tightrope feet, which is like this, and that's off balance. But they're still straight, so they, they'll think, oh, the feet are straight, but they're on a tightrope. We want them on skis, because they need to be underneath each hip. Is that a lot to do with momentum going forward? It's to do with not crossing your feet over. If you cross your feet over, you start to step across and tip away, which is called lateral flexion. We don't want to do that. We want to keep everything aligned to target as we're built as human beings. Feet under knees, under hip, feet under knees, under hip. Keep it simple. So front on bowler, we'll drop into the block. Tent pick one, two. Simple. If I'm a semi bowler, I've got to turn these laces to land. That movement is called pre-turn. I'm going to turn those laces before the front foot impact. So a semi-bowler, just base only, would do this. They turn their foot just before the front foot impacts. And a sideways bowler would be here and they would turn more. Why that's important is we're trying to engage ankle, knee and hip rotation. We're trying to rotate our hips towards the batsman. And that twisting motion is called torque and that creates speed. So it helps us to create a rotation of the hips into the block. If you're a sideways bowler, you can't just bend your knee. If you remember Steve Finn, he changed, I think, the laws because he kept hitting the Yep, stumps with his yeah. knee. And if you look at his bowling action, he tends to bowl like that. I'm exaggerating. When actually, that would be the answer. So pre-turn, drop step, front foot block. Again, the top half of the body is the same for all three. Grab the batsman's collar, grab the sight screen from behind. As a sideways bowler, that's the position I'm looking for. And you'll notice that I'm balanced over the top of my knee, under my hip, under my shoulder, it's all aligned. What I'm not doing is this. I'm not pushing my body forward before I bowl because I want the bottom half of my action to do this before I've used the top. Front on. I'm not using my top. I'm getting my base to be active first. This is where lots of bowlers and coaches misunderstand how the body works. It works from the floor upwards, like a rocket taking off. We need to build from the floor, then we can bring the top in second. Okay, so 10 peg one to two. I was a sideways bowler myself, so let's do it sideways. I'm in position, ready to go. Hopefully you found that useful. If you did, please do smash that like button for me and subscribe to the channel too if you haven't already. Be sure to also get in touch with Ian with all your coaching needs. Link in the description below and I'll see you in the next one.